Well, if you've had any exposure to mainstream corporate media over the past few years, you've probably seen articles like this. The Great Barrier Reef is damaged beyond repair and can no longer be saved. Say, scientists. Oh, scientists. There, there's just one problem. There's one fly in the ointment of these ever piling up catastrophes. Like so much the mainstream media says, it's actually the opposite of what's true. The annual data on coral cover for the Great Barrier Reef produced by the Australian Institute of Marine Science was released on Monday and it shows the amount of coral on the reef is at record highs. This data, like all the other data on the reef, shows that it is in robust health. And not only is coral growth not decreasing, it shows that coral growth rates have, if anything, increased over the past 100 years. And that measurements of farm pesticides reaching the reef levels are so low, they can't even be detected with the most ultra-sensitive equipment. Oh, it kind of shreds few narratives. So why is it that it's so commonly believed that this is an environmental problem? Our science organizations have convinced the world that the reef is on its last legs. One reason this happens is that occasionally colossal amounts of coral are killed, mostly by cyclones, but also by the crown of thorns starfish and bleaching. So the media, with its predilection for bad news, can be fed a regular diet of doom. Our scientists are always happy to oblige... They get plenty of funding from the governments as these tools are used to concentrate power into the hands of a few. Communism by environmentalism. But the good news doesn't end there. Courtesy of NASA.gov, we can see carbon dioxide fertilization greening Earth. In fact, it's a phenomenon called global greening. We have more green matter growing on Earth than we have at any point in its history since Christopher Columbus. Or in other words, our Earth has never been healthier. But wait, it gets even better than that. My personal favorite, because all the alarmist models are based on, well, computer models. That means programmers are putting a bunch of inputs into a computer program and getting one output. And those of you familiar with the butterfly effect should understand that one small potential error in any of those millions and millions of inputs which would affect that final output mean that you could get a massive deviation in the real world and in fact they have missed a piece of information that was important in fact you could say a critical piece of information the computer models forgot to include clouds scientists find man-made climate change doesn't exist in practice when the modelers include clouds. Now, this study was performed by scientists in Finland, and they determined during the last 100 years the temperature increased about 0.1 degrees Celsius because of CO2. The human contribution was about 0.01 degrees Celsius. An increase of 0.1 and man's contribution is 0.01. Finnish researchers bluntly state. This research has also been collaborated by a team at Kobe University in Japan, which has furthered the Finnish researchers' theory. New evidence suggests that high-energy particles from space, known as galactic cosmic rays, affect Earth's climate by increasing cloud cover, causing an umbrella effect. And this is no fringe conspiracy journal. This was published in Science Daily. This umbrella effect, by the way, is an entirely natural occurrence and is the prime driver of climate. You can see here, it was published in Science Daily. Winter monsoons become stronger during geomagnetic reversals, revealing the impact of cosmic rays on Earth's climate. New evidence suggests that high-energy particles from space, known as galactic cosmic rays, affect Earth's climate by increasing cloud cover, causing an umbrella effect, the very cloud cover that the models forgot to take into account entirely. When speaking of the umbrella effect, they say, 
The IPCC has discussed the impact of cloud cover on climate in their evaluations, but this phenomenon has never been considered in climate predictions due to insufficient physical understanding of it, comments Professor Hyodo. He's, he goes on to say, this study provides an opportunity to rethink the impact of clouds on climate. When galactic cosmic rays increase, so do low clouds. And when cosmic rays decrease, clouds do as well. So climate warming way, may well be caused by an opposite umbrella effect. The umbrella effect caused by galactic cosmic rays is important when thinking about current global warming as well as the warm period of the medieval era. And of course, this all becomes relevant again because Joe Biden blames climate change for the devastating tornadoes that have killed at least 70, you know, because never let a crisis get in the way of good politicking. But of course, even if you're a true blue believer, you can see now that the models have left out critical inputs that scientists are still struggling to understand today. And then when taking into account factors like the umbrella effect, the effect of cloud cover, the fact that our Earth has never been greener due to global greening, and that the Great Barrier Reef is now showing record levels of coral cover and is not doomed at all whatsoever. You can let go of your hatred for humanity and industrialized society and capitalism because, as you can see with all of the evidence, our Earth has never been healthier.